Hello everyone, today I would like to speak about red cow as one of the scientific proof that the Torah that we received 3,320 years from the creator of the world, it's 100% divine. As you know, we have thousands of proofs, this is one of them. Uh, according to the Torah, uh, the Jews need to have red cow to purify the high priest, the Kohanim, when they serve in Bet HaMikdash in a holy temple. Sometimes they become impure by touching a dead body or walking over a grave. So the, this high priest that serve God inside the holy temple are not permitted to enter the holy temple until they'll be purified by special water. Which water? The Torah gives instruction. You have to find a red cow. How many red cows we had in history? Only nine. In tradition, we know that we're going to have all together 10. We are waiting for the last final one, which we're going to have that will be used for the third temple that is in the future we are going to receive, God willing. But in history, nine red cows. The Torah say red cow completely red, not mixed with other colors. A red cow that nobody ever used before, not for work, not to put any weight on the back of the cow. Once you have a complete red cow that nobody ever used, you slaughter it, you burn everything, you take the ashes and mix with special spring water from Jerusalem, from the Shiloh River, with all kinds of spices, as the Torah gave the ingredients, you mix all this water and you splash on the impure Kohanim. Every Kohen that is impure, there's a Kohen that splash on him this water and now he becomes pure and is permitted to go and serve inside the temple. This is the background. The Midrash, which is a part of the Oral Torah, asks a question. Are Jews permitted to buy red cow from a Gentile, from a non-Jew? If a non-Jew was lucky to have a red cow, is it possible that Jews can come and buy the red cow for him, what's the question? What's the doubt? The doubt is that if the goy, the non-Jew, put weight on the back of the cow, obviously he's not going to tell them. Because we're talking millions of dollars in our time. If he knew that by just putting a bag of rice on the back of the cow, he just lost millions of dollars, no person would ever tell the truth almost. And can we count on him? to tell us the truth or not. Why? If the cow was used, it doesn't want anything more than regular cow. If it wasn't used, it worth hundreds of times more. That's the question. The answer is, of course, you can buy and you don't have to wait for him to tell you the truth. There are two witnesses that can testify if the cow is kosher to be used or not. Like everything else in the Torah, the concept is always that there are two indications like if you want to know what is kosher from the oceans, it needs fins and scales. If you want to know which animals are kosher, they need to have split hooves and chew their cud. And here the same thing. The Torah said there are two signs in the red cow to know if somebody ever put weight on the cow before. What is it? There are two hairs in the neck. And the eyes of the cow, those are the indications to know if any weight was put on or not. The Midrash brings a story that the Gabaim, the people in charge of the money in the temple, they came to one uh, Gentile to buy a red cow from him. And the first price was four coins of gold, like today, let's say $4,000. And the Jews agree right away to buy it, and he started to bargain with them. No, five, six, seven, ten, any price he brings, they agree to pay right away. And he asked his neighbor, excuse me, why the Jews are so generous today? They want to buy this cow for any price. I say, what's going on? Because it's red? The other one told him, no, you fool. Any price you tell them, they'll pay. Right away, he raised the price to a thousand coins of gold, 250 times more than the asking price. The Jews have no choice. They must buy this red cow. They agree. They say, but it's a final price. We come tomorrow with a thousand coins of gold. Please prepare the cow for us. They came the next day with a big sack full of gold coins. They spill it all on the table. His eyes were blinded from so much gold. But of course, he wasn't interested to give them 
a kosher cow for their use. So all night he put bags of flour on the back of the cow. By the morning he took off the bags and he brought the cow out. The Jews showed up and the deal is about to be made. And the rabbis told him before he touched the money, we have to check something. He did not know. One rabbi came to the eyes of the cow and he looked at the eyes and he saw if the eyes are straight and apparently the eyes became cross-eyed. And the other rabbi took a magnified glass and looked at the neck of the cow. There are two hairs from millions of hairs that the cow has. Two of them are unique. Once you put a weight on a red cow's back, those two hairs falling down. The rabbi was looking for it and he found them. They are, they are down. The rabbi told him, we're sorry, there's no deal. You fooled us. Yesterday was good, today it's not good. You put weight in the back of the cow. They took off all the coins of gold and left. This Gentile went back into his home and hung himself and committed suicide. But before he did that, he said, bless you the one who chose this holy nation and gave them all these secrets. This is the Midrash. Now, why do I tell you all this story? Because this story has a solid, strong scientific proof that the Torah was given by the creator of the world and not by human being. How do I know? Very simple. Let's use common sense. As I said, the cow has thousands and millions of hairs. It's a very big creature, full of hair. What human being possibly was even thinking about two of these millions of hairs are unique? Where are the two? How did he know to look for them in the neck? It could be anywhere. First, how do you know there are two out of millions? That's a mystery. Second, finally that you know there are two, how do you know where in the body, where to start looking for them? Third, how do you know there is a direct connection between the eyes to the weight that you put on the back of the cow? The Torah says once you put weight on the back of the cow, the eyes become cross-eyed for the rest of the cow's life. That's it. And now you know, two ears are down, you can never raise them back up. The eyes are cross-eyed, somebody put weight on a cow, it's obsolete, you cannot use it. The conclusion is very simple. No human being was able to write such a thing. He never had the knowledge, he didn't know what to write, what to look for. He couldn't even imagine such a thing in his wildest dream. Only the creator of all cows and the creator of this red cow that knew that secret. This is a divine secret. And he told it to Moses in Mount Sinai, and it was transferred from generation to generation until our time. Otherwise, there's no other explanation. Thank you for your attention, and goodbye.